So I am Piotr, and today we will be little discuss about killer optimization in the Python. Probably everybody who works with Python and need to work with data, you need to use special data format. At the beginning, when you start the learning, use the flat file like the text file. But you know, knowledge is that better is better if you can more and more. So probably in the future we would you like to use CSV, so comma delimiter file. Everybody know what is this. One of the most popular format file to save data as the flat file using the company, using the normal project, using the startup, the most popular. Like Excel for the old company for database structure for financial, like CSV is the best option at the moment to manage streaming data in the, for example, big data at the moment. Easy to understand because every information was there per line, calling row, everybody is separated by special mark and we decided what is the mark. And usually easy to transform data databases, relation database data like MySQL or Oracle database to flat file using this format file. But we had a little problem if you're working with more and more data using this format file. The first problem is that more data is equal to more memory, time, CPU, resources to manage. If you have 1,000 row, okay, that is fine. If you have one uh, 10,000 row, okay, fine. But what's happening if you have million, 10 million, 100 million records, it's not good to work like just like that. So more data, you need to more resource to manage. Unlock. Probably if you're working more time with the CSV, you can see that we don't have any difference between text file. Still, we have the normal uh, special module or library for CSV reader, CSV writer, using the array to manage specific row, but still, this is only drink data. So that is the problem. And the last one is the size. I prepared, if I remember what, 10 million rows data file, and I have the over 500 megabytes for my disk space. And this is the little example. So you can see that for the future, if you have more data, you need more the space on the, your disk. So that is the very problem. So, okay, Piotr. I see this file, okay, I need to optimize it. I don't want to kill my machine, kill my program because I have a huge data format calling CSV. So what can I do? The best option at the beginning is using the most popular libraries calling pandas or the second one, Dask. And somebody can call me that. Okay, Piotr, but Pandas or Dask is the data science, data analytics library, and I am the big data developer. I'm preparing environment. Okay, I understand. But the basic functionality of this library is the very good for optimization your work. So I don't call you, okay, you need to use the whole library. No, you can't use the one specific module calling the read CSV and your application can be better performance. So that is the first option, what we can do. The second one, when we are focusing on the storage and the read and read time, you can using the Parquet or Feather. So the special data storage time preparing for big data. Both of them, are accessible using the pipe install. And this is the part of the pandas. So once again, good to know these two format data for the data storage. So let's start from the pandas and dask. What we can using or what we can use for that. Let's focus on the pandas because it's the most popular library for this option. You can using the, for example, chunk size, 
So let's split your file when reloading data. You can read only necessary columns to your task. So don't read the whole file. You can set manual data types. So you don't need to um, work for default system. And if you want to test something or preparing now functionality, you can create the samples of for testing or develop. So let's switch to the pie chart. And my second, first question is the letters, is that enough big or just little increase the font? I think it's fine. Okay. It's fine, fine, right? Yep, yep. Yes. So first of them, let's check my data site. As I said, I have the over 10 million records with dump data like number, first and last name, nationality in the shortcut, country name, score, and something data like last update. And you can see this is the over 500 megabytes. For the preview, we have only read only mode. And I have a simple application to just read my data to application, okay? Using the correctly encoding. And let's check how much time we need for prepare our environment to work. You can see my application is working. And you can see that the clear read, when I call that, we have an, uh, almost 10 seconds. So at the moment is the fine, maybe time, but you need to remember that, for example, this data can be more and more in the future. So this time it will be bigger and bigger. So the first option for your optimization is the provided the chunk size. Chunk size or chunk size is the options to split your read file on the specific part of rows. So the value for this argument is the how many rows I need to read at once. So for example, let's comment the first option using the second one and prepare the chunk read. And you can see. At the moment, we have the very, very better time for read our file. And still, we have the same size of, size of file. I mean that the, we don't skip any rows from the file. So at the moment, you can see if you have the lots of data, we can just splitting, splitting it by the amount of rows. and our read time for the data frame is, is the very, very better. Of course, you need to remember if you want to, to work with this data, you need to processing it what you need. For example, I can just print it on the console once again, and you can see that I had a special information when so many rows and columns we have the first specific chunk. And we are just managed the file based on the this size. Okay, if you want to just compute this data, for example, no, uh, for example, I don't know, average value per ID, average uh, sum value per key, something that typical analytics information, data frame is better option for the best read file. And you can split your work using the Chunks. And of course, if you need to, for example, save your information from this file to different place, I need to first concatenate this information for the future. But still, concatenate plus read data using the chunk size will be very, very faster that read at once and probably is the first question okay but how because you need to remember that python 
in the normal size, I mean that the normal reading, using the situation, if I can say, batch all in one. So, okay, I have the full file. So let's read at once. So, for example, if you have the problem with memory, you can problem in the future with out of memory problem. But from the second option, chunk size and using the concatenate, if you want to, you can prepare special processing uh, the, the processing function to read chunk size, processing something, save this information, free memory for the processed data. So just split your work, split your data to work. Very useful option at the moment. And you can see still we had the, the pandas and I just using the read underscore csv function to read the data. And I don't using the special management. So at the moment I can only read and write data from one place to another and probably will be faster than normal with open context manager function in the pipe. So this is the first option, how to don't kill your optimization. So the next option, what's the problem with you working with data is the killer optimization is to read the whole file. For example, you have a task for my data. Piotr, let's compute summary score per key. So what do you do? First, okay, let's read the file, choose the necessary columns like number and score, and prepare the result using that, okay, group by per key and prepare summary. It's a fine, but when you don't use only necessary columns, like the, not the shortcut, you can see when I check my memory usage, for the whole file is the interesting value is the over three gigabytes of RAM. And, but at the moment, as I said, sorry, but I don't need the whole column to manage that. You can see float, integer, object. So we have a five strings, one integer, 64, bytes and float 64 bytes. But still, okay, I don't need only two columns, two entries, not seven. So that is the first problem or your killer optimization. So once again, let's optimize it using the only necessary column. So for example, let's prepare special array with information what I need to my work. So this is the column number and score. And let's give this information to our data frame using the special parameter calling use calls. And once again, check memory usage. Ta-da, you can see that from over three gigabytes of RAM, we reduce to less than 200 megabytes. And still we can finish my work. So for example, let's summary all scores per key, yeah, group by key. I have only necessary information to my work from my database, calling the data.csv. And I using the less memory that situation when I'm using the whole file. So at the moment is the very good option to using only necessary columns for your application. You need to remember that if you're working with data, we have the whole data data, I mean the whole tables, for example, from databases, but still something functions, something uh, problems, need only part of them. So just cut necessary columns from data frame and use them in your application. This, the number three, 
is the use date type better. Once again, I have my memory and I have the two different, different columns, number and nationality and the shortcut. And once again, I can to check how many memory I need to for specific column. And you can see when we have a result, this is the very huge value if you mean the memory usage. Why? Because data frame provided the default data type for specific column. For example, for the integer is the also integer 64 bytes, float 64 bytes. String or data usually is the object, so that is the string. But for my situation, doesn't not, doesn't not care if it's nationality or number. I had, for example, information that the number is the range from zero to 100. So I can uh, can check size or range of the value. And once again, do, I, do you need the integer for the 64 bytes? If you have the value from zero to 100, probably no. So maybe the better option is to use specific data type for so once again, when you read your data from the CSV file, you can use the special parameter calling D type. And we have to the, uh, and we have the special dictionary calling where key is the column name, and the value is the data type. So, for example, I don't want to use the integer for sixteen four. Hey, would you like to use the integer i? And once again, check the memory usage for number column. Actually, you can see that is the eight on the beginning. So let's check now. Yeah, that's working. And you can see that we have the only one of eight from the size memory usage. And still we have the whole data in my environment. Next, killer optimization using the default data types for data frame. The best option, if you know which range, which data you have in your data source, the better option is to using the data type manually. And you can see, don't lose the data, still my application work, but I don't need too much memory like for the default option. This is the option for the float. We have option for integer, but what the situation for the object? Because this is the string, yeah? This is the text. Data frame provides the special data type calling category. What is the category? Category is the simple dictionary for the small part of the UniQ value. In the, in the other way, if you know that special column has the only few UniQ value, you need to decide what is the small part of all data, you can use category. For example, is the gender, this is the example, for example, your conto is active, Boolean, true, false. And for my situation is the nationality, because I have the over 10 million records, but probably my nationality is the maybe 20 option, maybe less, maybe more, but still this is the only small percent of the UniQ values for the whole data, whole data. So let's use for the nationality, for the NAT, the special category data format. So let's categorize it. And once again, let's check the memory usage for the data frame. 
And you can see that the optimization is also very good. Once again, don't lose the data. Still can working at the same level like for the default read, but I don't use too much memory. So if your machine have a problem with memory, maybe this best option to optimize your application. So the last option before we going next about Dusk, let's prepare the sample. What does it mean prepare sample? For example, you need to prepare testing or do you need to check if this data, your application works correctly? Because for example, you prepare the average value of score, you prepare the special translate nationality shortcut, etc. And you have the special data value. So once again, this is the similar problem. Okay, I need to test it. So do you need to read the whole file? The <laughs> over 10 million records? Maybe not. Maybe it's, it's not good option for that. So once again, for testing, next <laughs> flags, next parameter for the read underscore TSV is the N rows. And we can decide that, decide how many rows you need to read. So that is the simple for loop. If you n equal specific value, stop reading. For example, I only prepare only first 200 rows. And at the moment, my application work faster. My memory usage is very, very lower. And at the moment, I can test my application if works correctly. And I don't need to read the whole file. I need, I don't need to prepare the special part of data in the another file. Just still using the one file, because for example, I don't know, my my project doesn't not provided me extra data source. I have only one link. So the next option, just read the part of that and checking if they work correctly. Once again, better optimization. And this is all situation when you would you like to use Panda. You can see, I don't use the special magic function of this library, like prepare matrix, prepare switching from not a number to specific uh, value, um, using with matloplib or specific CF form library. No, I using only one specific function read WTSV, and you can see that you can avoid the killer optimization with the simple module or simple function instead of using the standard import TSV from the Python. For the future, okay, if you learn and you prepare the specific data and you know this is the small part of data, for example, thousands, okay. The, probably you, you can see the difference. But if you know that data will be more and more, more and more rows, probably in the one day you're going to work and see, sorry, we have an out of memory problem because your application is killing. So please bear in mind that the one specific function can very good provide it optimization your application. But this is only Panda. As I said, we have also the Dusk. This is the not new, but more and more developing configuration from the open source community. Dusk using the Pandas or more standard library like Matloplib. So this is not nothing new, but developer team focusing on working with the multiprocessing on the processor or just scale for your application. So when you know that you want to focus on the machine learning, data science, or you want to, your application will be scalable, probably Dusk for only read data will be better than normal Panda. 
And if somebody on that working with the Scala, Scala or Spark uh, will be happy because Dusk using uh, like the plan or using the, the motivator, uh, Spark and Scala project for Dusk. So for example, Dusk provided the most of the useful for the aggregate data function, like the group by summary. So for the simple aggregate function, you can use it also the dusk. But still, dusk working different than panda. Once again, I had a special Python file using the data frame from dusk, not missing with the pandas. And let's check the read data without any chunk size. So I don't split the file. I just read them. And you can see, including compute. Compute, this is the function to read your data to memory. So let's place in memory your data. We have the less than six seconds. Once again. I will be back to the normal read with a chunk size in the application. Come on. So let's once again check the normal pandas here. And you can see how many times. Almost 10 seconds. This is the data from, from the pandas library, data frame from the dusk. Also, dot chunk size, don't splitting the file, everything on the ones, including the compute, less than six seconds. So as I said, dusk, using the standard library like pandas or the matplotlib, but still is focusing on the scalable and performance for the data science, machine learning or big data, because it's, as I say, this is the motivators for them is the Scala and Spark. And you can see still, read the whole data, doesn't matter, less time for the pandas. Dusk is not popular in the project, uh, in the companies, but please keep in mind that is something or for that exists. It's not the problem to, using in your project. This is not special outside library like just pipe install Dusk. And you can see data frame working on the application. You don't need to special dependencies like uh, engine, special sorting algorithm. No, this is working like pandas. So that is the good option once again. So in summary, in this part, you can use the Dusk also for the read the data, and this is the faster dot pandas. And you have the built-in functions to simple aggregate and manage your data, like group by, like provided the summary, average value, minimum, maximum, you have built in. As I said, focusing on the data science and machine learning. So inside, you also find the useful function for this specific part of the software development. So this is the first step, how to optimize it, your application using only pandas and dusk. And we have a good idea for data, for memory usage and CPU, I mean the, the time work. But as I said, the second option to your optimization is the specific data storage format, not using the CSV. The most popular options is that uh, Parquet and Feeder. You can see this is the one of the most popular functionality about read and write time for the specific data format. And you can see that reading and writing time for the huge information is the very, very thick type instead of Parquet or Feather. Because Parquet and Feather is the data storage format focusing on the specific 
no SQL idea. So for example, what I mean the idea, because CSV is the, as I said, this is the flat file and you just prepare the special row with delimiter and the separate. But parquet and feather is the binary data storage format. And you can, you can see just go inside and see what you have. Okay, so many questions. Piotr, but in the Python, we have a pickle. What is what the problem with the pickle? Of course, you can see the pickle module. This is the also safe to binary format. That is serialization, fine. But pickle has the two major problems. First of them is not stable because you can have the difference between, for example, Python 3.7 and Python 3.10. This, this is the first option. Second one is the only for the Python. So if you want to use, for example, for Kafka, for the Scala, Spark, for another language, for the Spark, okay, you can. You cannot. So, okay, if you're working for only the Python and your project just simple serialization, okay, you can use them, will be fine. But I don't recommend it. CSV is the most popular, Parquet and Feather also. So better option is to have the little experience and knowledge about the data format. And you can see disk storage is also optimization. So let's check it in the short way. I prepared the special use another format. As I said, the parquet and feather is the part of the pandas. So let's read the our file, CSV. And the next option is just to save this data to specific data format. So OK. Maybe this is the stupid because I'm read uh, CSV and write to CSV. But as I said, I would you like to check the time for read write. First is the standard option. The second one is the parquet. And the last one is the feather. Let's check it. If you have any question at the moment, wow, we cannot set no such file as snapshot. Okay, because I don't have the directory. Let's snapshot. Let's quickly fixing. And we check what's happening. You remember that almost 10 seconds is the for read the data. And let's see what will be what's happening. Let's wait. Okay, see my I see my computer today doesn't want to collaborate with the meeting. So let's back to the difference between parquet and the feeder and let's work. Okay, CSV. You can see 53 seconds. So this is the huge time. Parquet less than seven seconds. Feather less than four seconds. So you can see that the write time is the huge difference between two environments, two data formats instead of standard. And let's check our snapshot. Yeah. You can see that this is the option. So let's open it in the explorer. And probably you can see, yeah, right? Or not? We can see it. You can see. And for example, parquet in the standard format, when I prepare the file, I have the less than 120 megabytes. Optimization by the feather is not the <laughs> nice like for the parquet, but still is the better that standard option calling the CS file. So you can see that when you use the parquet or feather, you can optimize it, your application for the read write time and for the size. 
So you can see first difference between storage files. That's the default configuration because we don't use focusing on the special options for the to save. But you can see less data, less space on the disk, and better time for save. So what is the huge difference because two data forms? When I should use the parquet, when I should use the feather. For that, the two options is the very popular. Parquet is a little more popular than feather, but still top two. If you're working with the Hadoop configuration, Hadoop cluster, when you use the Hive, using the Ambari, using the Cloudera, just use, you know that your application using the HDFS, your option is the parquet. Or if you're working with the API or network, so you download data using the FTP or just API and saving something from the API, Parquet is also the best option. One minus, you need to install special engine for work. This typical engine is the, calling the PyArrow. So we have a extra dependencies, in, not only Pandas, we need to use also the PyArrow NG. Further, as I said, the second most popular data storage format, if you working with the Jupyter Notebook, Zeppelin in the AWS, using the Google Colab, is the slightly better performance than the part. I don't know why, but when I check it, Feather probably more likely uh, not notebooks instead of the part. And I don't test on the interact, but for the most popular option, Google Colab and Jupyter is the best option. And once again, one necessary engine to work by Feather. So this is you need to remember. Next engine to work, next dependencies, but don't uh, don't be afraid. PyArrow and PyFeather can be installed using the pipe install command. And the most popular option for the local working, Feather is optimized to work with SSHD. So you can see, I had a, a, in the laptop SSHD drive, and you can see the best <laughs> uh, write time from the free option. So in summary, my presentation, if you're working with data using the the most popular format for the flat file calling the CSV. You need to remember that if you have more and more data, you can kill your optimization. I don't doesn't matter if the CPU memory on the disk space. At the moment, the best option is the know what is the pandas parquet or the feather and using in your application. You don't need to use the whole library. You can use it only one similar or similar, one simple function. Read w uh, underscore tsv and with special arguments like user columns, just read the only necessary columns using the chunk size or just uh, setting your data types. You can optimizing your memory usage and CPU usage. And if you want to optimize it, your disk space and read and read time, you can use it the parquet on the feather. In the software, local machine and SSHD, feather. Hadoop or the AP network, parquet. So maybe I hope that my presentation show you that best, the best option is to learn this free specific library to optimize your work. And do you see, this is only five function and your application work very, very better. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Maybe this is time for our, question. Yes, maybe someone have questions.